It's day two of New York Comic Con. I am exhausted. We've been doing interviews. People are just flooding in here. This isn't even as bad as it's gonna get. Tomorrow, it's gonna be even crazier than this. There are lines. I think some people are waiting for something that's never gonna happen. You're wondering about the Reese's Pieces in my hand or the blurry object that might be Reese's Pieces in my hand? Well, that is my lunch. That is all I have had other than three sesame seeds. I think we should go have some fun while the fun is still there to have. I broke a rule of journalism. I'm talking with Reese's Pieces in my mouth. Let's go. Do you always feel like you have wings on, but now you actually do? Well, yes. That's what it comes from, yeah. You know, from time to time you have to fly a little and just let it go. Very cool. Mm -hmm. How long did it take you to do this? Can you spread them for us? Actually, it took me like maybe a week. Yeah. What's the craziest thing you've seen here so far? Uh, pretty much an almost fully naked chick walking out. Oh no, uh, I'm sorry, I saw Jessica Negri. Why am I talking to you if there's a naked chick walking around? <laughs> How does it feel to be normal looking here in costume? It actually is a first. Every time we do an event, we're in costume. Everybody else is in regular clothes. Maybe you should have come in jeans and a, a white t-shirt. I totally agree with you. I would have felt different if I was in jeans and a t-shirt. Right. But you are right. It is weird. If I interject here, if you call it costume. To us, it's not a costume because it's these, skin. It, it is skin. We, I mean, this is this is our normal. Uh, these are our working clothes. So it's it's not a costume like you know that may be a costume over there, but it's it's. So to us, it's you know just a part of the job. Get back to work. Look at how big it is. It's like life-sized. I love it. I said I wanted it, but I don't want it that much. But I still respect the artistry of it. If this, if this is Friday, I'm really kind of dreading tomorrow. And as much as I'm excited, dread. Maybe these are gonna help out. <laughs> I feel a lot of times. A lot of times, this, this is kind of like my kind of stance. <laughs> yeah. Widen the way, and that way, well, somewhere right now, my girlfriend can get through behind me. Wow, they're, they're really, they're really falling. You've let yourself go, Wonder Woman. A little bit, yeah. It's that time of the month. Oh my goodness. Yeah, everything sags a little bit. Scott was trying to tell me about something, something over there, but as soon as I saw ponies everywhere here, I was like, oh, my daughter loves this stuff. How is it selling? Uh, pretty well, pretty well. We've been doing pretty good this uh, weekend, so a lot of brony friends. What is that? Uh, I mean, it's Twilight Sparkle, but what? It's a uh, My Little Pony store that our friend uh, made for us in the late. Philippines. Um, it goes in just like this. It's a little wrong, but it goes in just like that. You can hold it like that, or you can pull it out for extra pony magic. It's a little bit hard to pull out. <laughs> That's what she said. The costume's Tron. Is this classic Tron or is this new Legacy Tron? Legacy Tron. Right. Legacy with a little bit of uprising with the degrade, um, the scar in the face. Right. What what went into this? Um, this is all actually powered up. The uh, switch is right here. I actually soldered, see that round thing? I actually soldered rechargeable batteries. Uh, 20, uh, Double eight batteries together. I have about 5,000 milliamps per hour. That the DC uh, milliamps go into the little inverter back here, which converts the DC to AC, and that's what powers up the suit. And then I had to solder all these together and cut them and tape them. It took me a while. I need a degree in engineering, yeah, electrical nice engineering. <laughs> I'm a mechanical engineer. Is this also your business card? Is it, are you going around like, hey, if you need a Halloween costume that uh, somebody bet me, and I'm like, I can win the Halloween costume contest and. I did. did, yeah. Very unique style here. What goes into doing this and where did the idea come from? I mean, the idea came from basically I've been doing this my entire life. I've been, you know, writing down ideas, you know, via pictures and text my entire life and sort of instead of just writing them down in a sketchbook to myself, I just sort of 
turn the camera, so to speak, on onto people and and drew them, you know, aimed at somebody else so that they would understand the concepts. Why did you drain them of all their color in life? I have no interest in color. I don't. I, I can't do it. I don't want to do it. It's it's minimal because I really like comics and media that don't tell you how to feel. It doesn't tell you you should be sad on this page or happy on that page. And I thought that too much color, mood, and light would would start to get in the way of the minimalism. Stormtroopers die because they can't move. This stuff's not. It can't move in this stuff. I'm talking to a clicker right now. I'm traumatized by you. This is horrible. I wish I was never born. <laughs> May I talk to the person underneath? Hi. Hi. Uh, what went into this? What is um, it? It's a standard... It's a lot of work. <laughs> it's a standard mask, and we uh, poured uh, sort of like polyfoam over it, and it's like the stuff you put in your attic, and expanded, and then uh, my dad, who does special effects makeup, he painted it for me. That's awesome. And have you had any fun with any of the Joels and Ellies that are hanging around? I snuck up behind a couple of them and just stood there and went and just freaked them out. Is that move? Oh, you guys are, are you taking a video? Yeah. Oh. The pop-up comic books you do, pop-ups are often associated with kids reading, but these are from classic literature. Why is that? Well, when, when I started out, they were telling me really the only thing that you, you it's impossible to do a unique story, a, a, an original story as a, as a pop-up book because the cost involved is kind of like animation. So the, you know, kind of the way to do it is you, you take a classic and, and you adapt it. And, uh, but uh, I, I, I chose a different kind of classic. How much time does it take to sort of plot out how these are going to look? Uh, my first book, uh, Moby Dick, it took about two and a half years, but I had to take odd jobs and stuff uh, on and off. Um, now I can do something, it's between six months and a year, and then it spends another year in production. What does that pre-production look like physically? Is it like, do you just have strings everywhere and pieces of paper you're folding to try to find the right angle that might tell that story? That's exactly what it looks like. <laughs> you look like you're a conspiracy theorist or something. Yeah, people tell me I, I live in a hamster cage. I challenge you. Whoa! Oh! Ah! Okay, I'm exhausted. I haven't eaten anything but this box of Reese's Pieces, and look, I'm out. So I guess I'm also out with New York Comic Con here. We met a lot of cool people, there were a lot of strange things, many people in different costumes, some of which were just, they will live in my mind forever more. I'm Brian Stewart, reporting for This Is Infamous, thank you for watching, and come back and see more great content here. Bye.